All right, so we've looked at the newer collections feature on Google+, why it might be valuable. Let me show you, I believe, a more valuable aspect of Google+, which are communities. On the left side, if you select communities, they'll be reminiscent of collections, but with a, with a sort of like the opposite effect. Whereas a collection is one person trying to reach many people, uh, communities could be many people trying to reach many people. So what I mean here is, I go to communities, I see recommended, which of those that you are a member of, and which are yours, because you can create communities as well. But I'm going to say right away, don't bother creating communities. Create as many collections as you want, but don't bother with communities, as I'll explain why in a moment. But a community, my recommendations here, based on how I've used Google Plus so far, is recommended to me nutrition and health, meals with friends, cooking, chocolate lovers, etc. And right below it says 28,000 members, 3,000 members, 238,000 members, 65,000 members. These are people on Google Plus who click the join button. Don't click the join button yet, but on one on any one of these, click to view it. Click the, the thumbnail. When you click the thumbnail, it will show you the content of the community. Sarah posted this about lemon. Ravi posted this. Manish posted this. Summer posted this. Uh, Fami posted this, Melissa, etc. People posting content. And the point of a community is. You have zero followers, but if you follow a community, in effect, you sort of now suddenly have 28,000 followers. Because if you join a community, you then have the access to post into it. If I click join, I now have the post button. I have the button to post something, and potentially 28,000 people could see that. Even though I've got zero followers, if I post something here, our recipe for rhubarb pie and then a link for it and a cool picture and a well-written post and such and I post it 28,000 people could see it. 28,000 people have chosen to follow this community to see the content of it so this is the most powerful way to use Google Plus take advantage of communities join as many as you want post to them with a lot of caveats let me go back. Exactly. You have to join to post. But here's the many caveats that I will give you. I'm going to go back to communities. I have all of these recommendations for communities. You might think, great, follow, 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 join, join, join. No. Don't just simply join communities because you can join a community. You want to do a little bit of reconnaissance. You want to check out the community a bit you want to think of a couple of things. One is, try to join communities that have at least 1,000 members. Because if you're joining a community with 30 members, that's a tiny pool of people to try to market to, to try to post something that people would care about. It really is about, you know, numbers and probability and such. The more I can target, the higher probability that will actually return on my investment. Again, the Bed Bath & Beyond conundrum. I get the coupon, my mom gets the coupon, I threw it away, my mom used it. My mom was a much more valuable customer than myself, and yet Bed Bath spent the same thousands of dollars to market to both of us. The more that you market to, the more that you post to communities with more people, even if you take 1% of a community, 238,481 times 1%, 2,384 people could potentially really care about what you posted. 1% out of 3,000 is what? Oops. 3,000, 1%, 30. Okay, 30 people could really care about what you post there. If you join a community of 1,000 people, that's 10 people. A community of 40 people, that's four people or less. So, you want to join communities with more people, 
<clears throat> but just because you see one with thousands, still don't click join. You want to do the reconnaissance. You want to click on cho chocolate lovers, for example, and see what are people posting. So Gune posted something, Fresh NYC posted something, and you want to see the activity. How many plus ones or shares or comments? Looks like this one's got a lot of activity. 91 plus ones, 114 plus ones, 7 plus ones, 43, and some comments and some shares here and there. Because it's very frustrating to join a community with 3,000 people, but no one is interacting. Everyone is just marketing. Everyone is just posting, and there's no interaction. There's no shares, there's no comments, there's no likes. You're not getting follows because everyone is using it selfishly. They're all simply posting and it's all, I'm in, I'm in this community for me. And they don't have a community in the sense of the term community. 384, 8, 89. Let's compare with one of these ones with 1,500 members. Food and wine, perfect pairings. 1, nothing, nothing, 1, 1, nothing, nothing. My post is going to get the same. People are not that engaged in this community with a thousand. There are communities out there that with one thousand are going to be amazing and they will get you results. But if you play the numbers and you join communities with more members and communities that are active, you don't know if they're active unless you click to view, so don't just blindly click join. That one's got eight, that one's got two, that one's got one. So slightly lower activity some activity, even though it's got nearly 3,000, it fits the criteria of at least 1,000. But it's not quite fitting the criteria of activity and community. So I may or may not join. I can join and check it out and use the community. If it doesn't work out, I unjoin. No problem. But you want to join communities that fit those criteria. If it's not suggesting a good community for me, I can always do search up here. What if I simply search for cookies. But you're saying that you have to post directly to the community? Mm -hmm. that, that doesn't just automatically no. post something in there? No. You have to post it directly to the community. I'll see how in a moment. But here under cookies it gave me results of collections and communities. Communities, more. And so now I'll see, okay, Cake Divas, Cookie Connection, Cookies and Cupcakes, uh, Cakes and Cookie Lovers. And usually when you do a search, it's going to show it to you in diminishing number of members order. 1,200, 500, 600, 500, 200, 94, <coughs> 191. So, okay, just because these really are pretty low, 641, might not mean that it's a bad community. So I would still check out the community. Their posts look really nice. That's got a three. That's a one. Everyone loves Grumpy Cat. Um, there's a spam post there and another one there. Um, not, not a lot of activity, really. It might not be that valuable for me to get into these community, this community that is, doesn't have much activity. What about the one of Cake Divas, which has the most, 1,200? It's just about in my parameter. Plus 1, plus 2, plus 1, plus 1, plus 12, plus 5, plus 6. So yeah, that one's fitting the bill. It's got the number that I'm looking for at least. It's got some activity, not a crazy amount, but maybe enough that, that really helps me. I'm looking for how many shares and plus 1s and comments and such, because all of those have a value, but some of them have more of a value. Let's see if I can show you an example. Because you have all of those interactions, but I want to see an example. Okay, maybe like this. Uh, we've got the plus one, we've got the comment, we've got the share. They're all valuable, but the least valuable is the plus one, the like. Not that it's the worst, because the worst is you do nothing. A person sees your post and says, nice, and moves on. They don't do anything. That's the worst. 
But if a person sees your post and they give you a plus one, that's a bit of an endorsement that they liked your post. Um, that person is a bit interested. A higher level is a comment. A person took the time to write something, maybe something as simple as, looks yummy, or your food makes me hungry. Okay, good. These people are saying that they're a little bit more interested in what you're posting. If they're giving that sort of endorsement, I can easily then click on their profile to go view them and then maybe click a follow and then maybe get a follow back. So these people have taken a little bit more effort to actually interact with a comment and sometimes it's just a very basic comment. That's more valuable. A higher level also is this share, the share button. A person has chosen to, they like this so much they want to share it over on their Twitter or their Facebook or share it from their own website with a link or on their own Google Plus to further spread that message. I want that for my posts because I might have 12 followers, but if one of those followers clicked to share and that follower had a thousand followers, I just reached a thousand twelve people in theory. So when you look at these communities, the more of these interactions they have, the better. The plus one is not the worst, but it does show, but it is the most disposable. Because I can look at something, plus one, move on. What else is there? What's next? I like that, plus one, move on. I really like that. Let me take a moment and comment. I really, really like that one. I'm going to share it. So that's what I want, myself. And the highest level of the interaction is follow. I don't know, everything that they're posting or follow a collection. So plus one, comment, share, follow. In that order, I would say, are the interactions that I'm always striving for. Um, easier said than done, of course. So you want to look at the competition. That's why you want to follow other accounts. You want to, you want to look at other accounts. So Melissa's very proud of her herbed turkey breast with rosemary parsnip fries because she's posting it a lot. That, I would say, is a little spammy. But she's getting a plus two here from that community and a plus four from that community. Comments here, Paul liked it, Tammy liked it. I wouldn't quite do that. I wouldn't post the same thing over and over. I wouldn't post the same thing to, to multiple communities. Because then if someone goes check out my profile, hmm. so she posted it like eight times. No, I went to her profile. I'm at her profile to see everything she posted. Yes, yes, they will show on your home. Yeah, she's done it in a, she's done it right here. Bodybuilding and fitness. Fitness. Okay. Eat clean train mean. Fitness and health secrets. So she posted it to multiple places. But if someone visits her profile like I just did, she'll see it all. I'll see it all. And she posts it. And then it looks spammy. So you don't want to repost over and over, or you don't you don't want to cross post. You don't want to post over and over because then you look spammy. But and but it might be working to her to some degree because she's got two thousand five hundred followers. But also you don't want to cross post because Google Plus communities are not run or endorsed by Google Plus. This is people. Someone chose people or companies created a community and got followers to the community. And who is in charge of the community? The person or managers of the community. So some of these posts here will have a little marker that says moderator. There are moderators that run these, not affiliated but from, with Google, not hired by Google, regular people. Up on the info, there's a little info icon on each community. You might see a description that is short or complex. It depends on the creator. You might see links to the moderators or other things. The point of telling you this is every community makes its own rules and enforces them its own way. 
This is not anything that Google is in charge of. This one here, food bloggers, a place for food bloggers to come. Feel free to post your latest posts and share. If you see a post you like, don't hesitate to tell the author. There are some communities that are run very dictatorially, just like it's always been on online. Someone created a community, they want to run it their way, they don't want any posts of stuff that they don't like, they can remove it. It's their prerogative. They can do it. They created the community, Google Plus lets it run however the person that created it wants. So if you're posting stuff, and if someone has rules here such as only post one thing per week, and you posted two things this week, one of your posts could be removed, best case scenario. Worst case scenario, you get banned from the community, and you lost 39,000 possible leads. Read the rules of the community. That's the other thing you have to do. Does it have enough people? Does it have enough interaction? What are the rules of the community? So let me see if I can find a draconian community. There's plenty of them. This group is for home cooks to discuss our art and craft. Uh, I don't know if professional cooks are excluded. Most likely it would say if it is. But there's some here that say in more detail do's and don'ts. So we'll always take a look at that info box. Okay, here's one. Android community. This Android community is brought to you by Android Central, etc. Here's the rule. Spam. Linking or referring to anything not Android related is spam. Advertising another Google Plus community. I made my own community and I want to get people to follow it, so let me post a link to my community and their community? No. Against the rules of this community. Nudity. This includes screenshots. Advertising. Racism or hate speech. Pirate software direct links to the software, etc. So this community has some more rules, and if you <coughs> go against the rules, your post could either be removed, your post could either be removed, or you, you could be removed from the community. And in this case, you will lose a community of one and a half million members. This one seems to be run by Android Central, which is a big, big website in the world of Android. So there's something being exported or whatever, just for the purpose of Not literally employed. This is well, someone that okay. created the account, built a following because they already had a following on a website, let's say, and it just and it just built up. But notice here, Darth Puffman is the moderator. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Communities can also be divided into sections. So here's a section on posts and such, and this one has a section on, on moderators. So sometimes it's hard to know who runs this community. There can be multiple people. But this particular community has a section called Community Notices. Short answer is you'll, you'll have to poke around. Sometimes in this info box it lists it very explicitly who's in charge. Oftentimes it's not, but there'll always be some sort of user that has a moderator status. You can then follow that account. But always check the rules of a community. And I've had really great experiences and results. As I said before the break, I post the same thing to Twitter, Facebook, Google+. But on Google+, Plus, I post it to the appropriate community, and I get many more follows or comments, traffic, because I'm targeting it directly to the people that care the most. Facebook has a mechanism of groups. How many of you knew that Facebook had groups? Raise your hand. How many of you have been, in the last week, in a Facebook group? There you go. So. Facebook has that aspect, like a community, but no one uses it. You might have heard of it, but not too many people use it. Uh, Google Plus has this aspect that works really well. Twitter doesn't have any kind 
of community group kind of thing. The closest is the hashtag, and that's a chaotic thing. So Google Plus has communities. Find the community that best represents your business or ancillary topics. If you're searching in a certain keyword and not finding any communities, try slightly different keywords or like a parent subject rather than a special specific subject. Join communities that follow my criteria of at least a thousand people that have a good amount of activity that are not so strict that you're not going to actually be able to use it. There might be a clause there that says no commercial posts. So then I will not be able to post any of my photos there that then say click here to buy the cupcake. That doesn't stop me from simply posting all of these great cupcake photos and then enough people might say that's a great cupcake, that's a company, let me click their profile and follow them. And that's why you don't want to create a community. Now you're going to need to moderate that and keep track of the spam and take out the bad content and keep it nice and clean and don't let it get overrun, overrun by spammers and viruses and, and negative people. And then you're going to have to build a following and get people to join your community and post something and you don't have time for that. Yes. What's the difference between join and ask to join on the community? Good point. Some communities say ask to join because they're exclusive. You need to click there and one of the moderators will go look at your profile and see what are you about. Will we let you into our community? So some of those ask to join could be valuable, like this one, Italian food. It's got 11,000 members I have to ask to join. Well, I have to click on the community, read the rules. Do I want to be a part of it? Because any club that would have me as a member, I don't want to be one. <laughs> Welcome to the Italian food, a nice corner in which we invite you to explore, discuss, and share that which makes the essence of the fantastic culinary experience that is Italian food. We hope that you can participate, etc. Please refrain from posting non-Italian food-related posts. You will be banned. Point blank. So, as long as I'm posting Italian-related stuff, I guess I can post links back to my shop. So that's what, what I was asking too. Like really yeah. <coughs> a company could create a community, and they do. So I don't know exactly. Uh, just quick as a quick look here, I yeah. don't know if a company or a person created it, but some person or multiple people, because you can have multiple managers of a community, is passionate enough to run this community their way. And if we f follow so the rules. Yeah, that's a lot to love. So if they allow me to join this community and I've got the appropriate content I could post and I could be getting activity and follows and likes or plus ones and maybe sales and such, but I'm kind of seeing, even though it's an exclusive community, I'm not seeing a lot of activity. This has got three, this has got one, zero, one, one, two, one. So that's why you just don't simply want to join or ask to join. You want to check Vietnam street food. Why hasn't that been removed? Well, someone's been asleep at the wheel, perhaps. But um, you want to be on top because it does happen. Um, I, I'm in a bunch of communities, and, and they all work really well, and I follow the rules, and I get a lot of results. There's one community that I've been removed from and there's no recourse because the person in it is very, very dictatorial. Mm -hmm. I posted content, believe me, I posted content that was related to the community, but that particular community owner still favors certain kinds of content. I like to post, I like to go to San Diego Comic Con and I like to take photos of everyone in their crazy costumes and I joined a community about costumes and I posted some of my photos. But that particular owner of that community focused much more on people in costumes of, let's say, video games. And I was posting a costume of someone in a Wonder Woman costume. I posted it enough times of different posts and such that were not up to his particular taste, even though it didn't say, only post video game costumes. Eventually I got removed from the community. There's nothing I could do about it. I went to go cry over at the Google Plus Help community, and they said, sorry, whoever runs the community runs the community. Google lets it open unless it's 
it breaks the rules of Google+, Plus, such as no hate speech and violence and that sort of thing. But however else a person wants to run it, that's how they run it. And he's the only moderator. So he's really running it with an iron fist. Um, you probably won't get into such kinds of communities, but be aware of that. Read the rules, post what's on topic, be nice, follow along, and don't always post me, me, me kinds of posts. Don't always post, look at this thing for sale, buy this now, subscribe. Post something fun and don't say anything about buy it. Balance the sales pitch with simply community building, and that can give you a good result. So that's the big secret about Google Plus. Communities. What I can't teach you is really what to post. It really depends on your company, your business, what you're trying to do online. What I will do is give you this reference, this website. Socialmediaexaminer.com There are many websites out there about the state of social media, tips on social media. This is one of them. Socialmediaexaminer.com. They post on a regular basis updates about what's happening on Facebook or Google Plus or whatever, and then how-to articles and advice articles. I haven't visited today, but I visit it often. Let's see what today's about. Scroll down here. Social media evolution. What does the future of social media marketing look like? That's a term you hear often, social media marketing. It's just another term for saying using social media to market, to, to reach an audience. Um, that one's actually also a podcast, so you can listen to it. You can download it and listen to it. Four free tools to analyze your social media competitors. I want to know that. I want to know what the competition is doing. And there's four free tools here. How to run a successful, a successful Twitter contest. Well, that can be extrapolated to some degree over to Google Plus as well. There's an idea. What if I run a contest on Google Plus? How to curate your social content with Reddit. Another big network out there, Reddit. How to use it to really post content that your followers would care about. Curation, that's another buzzword. Content curation. What does a curator do at a museum? Exactly. Determines what to be de exhibited in a certain time period. Content curation on social media is the same thing. There's so much stuff out there. People get overwhelmed. But if you're a content curator, simply posting content that your followers would care about, guiding them to what's interesting, that's the new trend. How to generate leads with social media quizzes. Here's some, an idea, some idea to post. Posting content, uh, posting quizzes. I, I like to follow the Internet Movie Database on Twitter, and they're posting about the latest movies and such, and once in a while they post a tweet such as, this famous actress won an Academy Award 20 years apart. Who is it? Well, that's enticing people to reply, to follow, to comment, to share, and such. It's about community building. You can also go to the top over here and search Google Plus. How to improve your Google Plus marketing. Relatively recent article. If the article is from 2012, it might not be as valuable anymore. <laughs> Stuff changes. So the, the newer the article, the better. But that's just doing a search. 1,000 results. This is one of many websites out there to keep up to date on social media. Anyone have any, an, any opinion or comment on any websites you like about social media to keep up to date? This one could, could, could keep you pretty entertained for a while. And it's one of the big ones because they're so big, 
they actually have a conference a social media examiner social media marketing world conference and it's being here held here in San Diego next year or this year we're, we're in next year already aren't we um, if you check out that link April 17th to the 19th basically it's a big conference about social media with all of these big names in the world of social media Guy Kawasaki will be there and such etc Kim Garst I follow her on Twitter she's always posting great stuff it'd be cool to meet her in person well great how much does this conference cost I can go to register now click now to register one ticket only one thousand twenty seven dollars at four hundred and seventy dollar savings I can make it in payments of two of five hundred nineteen dollars. So there's many, many, many tech tech mark, uh, tech uh, conferences out there. Social media conferences. Facebook has its own conference. Twitter has its own conference. Microsoft. Here's one all about social media marketing, using social media effectively, and this is an average kind of price. Yes, these conferences can be very expensive. Brett, you're going to be rubbing elbows, hobnobbing with the people in the industry. You can make contacts. You could learn a lot. And this one's right in our backyard. So the concepts that we talk about here can apply from Google Plus over to any other social network. And that's why I also teach a class for this college on social social networks. And um, starting next Tuesday, 6 p.m., I'm starting day one of my social media class. Uh, in that class, um, we cover, depending on the, the length of the month, we cover three to five social networks. Just like we did today, we spent all day talking about Google+. In that class, I also cover Google+, so there would be some redundancy if you took this class, but not everyone takes this class or that class. But in that, starting on Tuesday, we're going to cover Twitter, Google Plus, and Facebook. So you'll get Google Plus again if you come on that day. But it'll be listed in the syllabus. Um, if we have more time, if the if the class is four weeks long, we also cover Pinterest. I also have a part two of that class, which will probably offered be offered next month or so. And in that class, I cover um, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, um, and then depending on the amount of time, other networks. This class, as if you see the syllabus, will also be talking about YouTube. But just to use YouTube for the social network aspect, not to create YouTube videos. The other class is to create YouTube videos, because obviously you need a video for YouTube to use YouTube. Next week when we talk about YouTube, I will provide you a video that's ready to to upload and optimize and such. But if you take the other class, we would talk about creating a video. So as we wind down and we get into some lab time, any questions on everything we've covered today? I can, uh, what's the adage? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So, okay, horses, I've led you to the water. It's time for you to drink. You're going to need to explore the different screens here that I didn't quite talk about, but the big ones are home collections and communities. Post content that would matter to these communities. Fill in your profile completely to entice people to follow you back and use it as much as possible. You get better at it the more you use it. Question? How did we delete the jump? Okay, if you want to delete it, Let's head over to, just to show you where it's at, we can go over to the settings of the account, and all the way at the bottom, you'll see, well, I guess they moved it now. Where did they put it? You should see a button somewhere here on our settings to delete. It used to be right at the bottom. What if we go to all pages? Hmm. Let me change this. Let me just confirm.
Okay, wow, they really hid this. Okay, let's do this. Okay, we were in settings, but that doesn't appear to be the place you do this anymore. So what we'll do is... We'll go up to the... Click on your icon on the top right corner. Now does everyone see all pages? You might not have had, have had all pages before because we had no pages to manage. Does everyone see all pages? Click on all pages. Because I manage different kinds of pages, I have locations and I have brand pages. The one I just created was a brand page. It was not attached to a location. So if you don't see anything here, go to Brand Pages. And when you're on Brand Pages, you will see Manage Page, View Page. Click Manage Page. Then on this screen, click the menu at the top left. There will be another page of settings yeah. and under those settings at the very bottom nondescript delete page so it used to be you can go to this page directly now it's at another route remember I'm recording my lecture so if you miss that it's in my lecture but it's in this spot here and this is where you can go in here and click delete and it'll want you to put in your password and confirm because it doesn't want you to accidentally delete all your info I won't go further but that's where the delete page would be. Any other general questions? So backing up again, next week we're going to talk about YouTube. I will provide you a YouTube video. We'll talk about creating a YouTube account. Since we've already got a Gmail account slash Google Plus account, we will easily attach a YouTube video account. So you might not want to delete this page just yet because the YouTube page is, is oftentimes linked to the Google Plus page. They, they share content. So next week when we talk about Google Plus, uh, about uh, YouTube, we'll talk about all its value for businesses. And then the week after that, we'll talk about Webmaster Tools and Google Analytics and such. Bring your password for your website then. And then the fourth week, Google Drive, Google Forms, and such. So that's it for the moment. We'll have a little bit of lab time. Thank you for coming.